Hey Collective and welcome back to the channel. Today is Sunday Fun Day and so I decided that uh, to post something today is kind of unusual because I tend to take Sundays off but today I wanted to kind of address something that I use personally in order to deal with adversity and since we're talking about building a turquoise leadership you know people who are more spiritually centered who then deal with the collective as opposed to the individual need uh, I thought we would do something that I do all the time which is when I have a real problem I tend to make a fantasy story out of it because sometimes I live in the, I live in the clouds um, it's a gift and sometimes what I'll do is I'll make it into like a love story like a Romeo and Juliet or a King and Queen story or uh, actually that's a really good idea let's go with a King and Queen story so let's say that I'm working through an issue what do I have right now um, a perfect example is I'm having issues where I'm currently residing and I'm trying to work out how best to address both my actual dreams that I'm trying to accomplish and practicality and also I have the whole earthquake coming it's the 21st through the 26th somewhere in between there something's about to go down um, and so I'm like dealing with that stress so let's say that I need to work out that problem and you know how I obviously would have people in my ear telling me what I should be doing what I shouldn't be doing and I'm having to question their motives and all that stuff and I'm kind of having to work it out so what I would do in this scenario that I think is really rewarding for most of the collective is to break it down into a love story or into a fairy tale so let's go with the king and queen story so let's say that there's a king who is about to become emperor but only uh, once the emperor okays it when he sees that the king can take care of his home and the kingdom and the spiritual needs not just the material needs of the kingdom and let's say that the king currently is surrounded by a lot of greedy people or people that are more self-interested and more driven by just one side of the equation so what would be realistic uh more material let's say that they're more material than they are spiritual or that they claim spirituality but their focus is more on the material capitalist side of that the monopolization of faith let's say and so the king is struggling with what to do and is trying to figure things out for himself and so he goes for a walk and lo and behold while he's out for a walk he runs across this peasant girl who innocently is minding her own business and is kind of you know i don't know painting something she's creating a new canvas of some kind and the king is looking at her and he's like somehow for some reason there's a connection and no one in the world would ever understand it and he knows it immediately but she's a peasant and so he speaks to her and they have this connection and she doesn't know who he is necessarily because she's you know she's a peasant and uh, he uh, doesn't necessarily introduce himself but the connection makes a big difference to his heart and his heart begins to sing and it blossoms just by being near her and he goes back into his normal world they part ways and he makes a date with her to see her again and he knows that, that probably won't happen and she just goes about her business like she would like a little butterfly and just flutters away right but what had happened what had happened was is that it changed the king's heart all of what was going on exteriorly now fades away and the only thing that he starts to realize is that he really has this attachment to something that he doesn't understand so he goes back to his kingdom He's in the castle, and he's back to the, you know, the, I don't know, the brother. The brother's in his here saying, you know, here's the story, and says, what are you doing going after a peasant girl? She's just drama. She's just trouble. Look at her reputation. Watch. We'll do an investigation on her. Blah, 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 blah. And they're doing all this stuff, and it's ta 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 And so they're trying to talk the king out of something that the king already knows is already in play. Has no control over it. Something given to him by the divine. I don't know. Um, it's a fantasy. And so the next thing you know is that the king can't sleep that night, and the king is constantly thinking about this individual girl. And and she has no idea. She just thinks he's probably charming and that he was cute, but she goes about her business because she's doing her own thing. You know, it's it's 2020, so the fairy tale now has the queen doing her own shit. She doesn't know she's about to be queen, but she just knows that she's like a little, she's just unique, right? And so she's doing her thing, and finally, there comes a point where the next morning the king it was waking up and the emperor's in his ear and is saying well i need you to, i need you to really like tell me what what's your plan what are you going to do here and he begins to say what he has been told to say which is you know make sure that you take care of the material side of it make sure that the kingdom is clean make sure that blah, blah 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 but he neglects the part about the spirituality and the, what's better for the kingdom and finally the emperor listens to the story and the emperor looks back at the, at the king and says you're not ready and the king says why not and the emperor says because you forgot one thing you didn't take care of the spiritual needs of the people have you ever been in love true love and the king is like how what and suddenly he can't say anything and so the emperor goes okay let me give you a minute to think about it why don't you go for a walk and then when you come back, we'll talk about it a little bit further, because right now I can see that you're upset. And so the king, all upset, gets up and leaves and goes and does his thing. And as he's on his way out, his little, his, uh, I don't know, his best friend, who has the best intentions in the world, 
runs into him and he tells her what is going on <clears throat> and she says to him and she goes what would make you happy I need to know what would make you happy because you seem to be distracted right now when you're talking to me and it's not about him because that makes you angry so what's going on and so he confides in her all of what had happened uh, previously and so the king looks at the, at the at the I don't know best friend whatever and the best friend says well are you telling me that you walked away from a connection because they're a peasant is that your idea of 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 love is that because they're a peasant and the king is now the king's really having a fucked up day and all he can think about is all the people who've been in his ear earlier saying to him that no it's a peasant girl talking about the materialism but not ever equating the heart of the matter which made the king in the moment as he's walking away from her all even more flustered than before and running out into the yard out to into the kingdom looking for this girl he realizes that everybody's interest was on themselves they weren't worried about what his needs were they were worried about how that would affect the kingdom they weren't worried about the king and how that affects the king himself and so feeling distraught and all fucked up like i was today <laughs> well not all fucked up but i was just like i was just like hmm Great, because I don't like drama. And so the king goes out, and now he's looking for this girl. And wouldn't you know it, he runs into the girl. And as he does, the emperor's magician pops in front of him, and set, or the wizard, whatever, or pops in front of him and says, hey, like right in between, when he sees the girl, and right in front of him, the, shows up, and says, hey, what's up? And the king's like, ah, blah, 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 and like unloads on, on the wizard. And the wizard just looks at the king and goes, ah, you're in love. And the king says, what? And the wizard just goes, do you see that girl right there? And points at the girl that the king was going to see. And then the wizard goes, do you know who that is? And the king says, no. That's Princess Anne. She's from two uh, communities down the way. She's two castles over. And the king goes, what? And she goes, yeah. She likes to dress as peasant in order to go and mingle with the people because she likes her kingdom to run effectively and she takes care of their spiritual needs before anything else. And the king looks at the, at the, at the wizard in complete shock. And suddenly everything makes sense to the king. It didn't matter at that moment what the wizard was going to say after that. So the wizard just says, if you'll excuse me, it looks like we're all taken care of here. Do you want me to introduce you to her? Or have you already met? And he vanishes. And so the king is now looking at this woman who he thought was a peasant. And the woman catches his eye and she says, hi, very innocently. So the king looks deep into her eyes. And in the moment, everything made sense every problem that he had everything that he was gonna have to sacrifice because you know he was about to clean fucking house when he went home like everybody that was talking shit and trying to just like they were all gonna be gone and he knew it but and he knew it was gonna be hell on earth but what does the girl walk up and go she says hey i pretending still to be a peasant and knowing that he knew who she was goes hey i have i found some change why don't we go for like a cup of coffee and so they go and sit for coffee the king never tells her who he is yet, right? And they're talking. And the more that she talks to him, the more it sounds like music to his ears. And he can't understand it because how could he have judged her so wrong? Or more to the point, why did he let other people talk him out of his own true destiny? Because it was destiny. He knew that it was the right thing for him, like my dream. Why would I ever let anybody do that, right? But for the king, he realizes, that's my destiny. How do I know? Because my heart is the only one who heard her when I thought she was a peasant. And she is now buying me coffee, not knowing that I'm the king. And so he's listening to her, and the more that she, that she talks, it's just like a violin. His heart starts to open and open and open. And before he, you know, before he understands it, she goes, I never really introduced myself to you. My name is Princess Anne. What is your name? And he goes, I'm King Arthur. And she goes, oh, oh, you're my neighbor. Oh, well, you know, in these hills, we don't really talk to each other because they're really, like, so materialistic. I don't worry about that stuff. I'm very up, I'm a mystic. I'm very much about spirituality. And he goes, that's interesting because everybody around me is very materialistic and greedy. Would you like to go out with me again? And she says, yeah, why not? And guess what? He goes home 
And he tells the emperor the entire story. And the emperor says, great, you've met your wife. Let's let that take its course. And when you two of you get married, you will have the kingdom. And his house will be taken care of. Because the, the emperor says, I now know that she will take care of the spiritual side of it, where you will take care of the material side. That is what is called a divine union. Welcome to emperor and empresshood. And that was the end of the conversation. And by the time that I was done figuring that little story out, I had figured out that I'm probably going to have to get a job over at Dairy Queen. Plus, I just really think it's really truth in advertising, <laughs> Dairy Queen. Um, but, uh, you know, just to, to get through until <clears throat> the doors open again, because, like, I don't know how long this P word's going to go on. And now I got an earthquake coming in real life, and I'm just looking at the world, and I'm going, all right, I can just sit here and wait for it all to happen. Or I can go just get a little day job until I need to, until I can get my shit to go in. But it was because I stopped listening to other people and I went and I centered my energy and all I did is checked into my inner child and my inner child decided to share that story with me. My expression of, of creation came through in that moment and I thought I'd share it with you all in a very, very interesting way. You see, when we think that people have our best interest in mind, we forget that they're always going to have their best interest in mind first. The question we should always ask ourselves is if they have your best interest in mind, then why wouldn't they endorse your dreams? Why would they tell you all the reasons it won't work instead of telling you why it will work? Why wouldn't they let you go and fall in love with somebody that might be the right one because they don't own your heart? They don't know what God has in store for you. One of the things that I find with turquoise leaders and any type of CEO I've ever worked with is there comes a point where they think that this is it. They think they get to a point in their life when they think that all they've materially created is all that they can have and they forget that that would only be a half-life. There's something greater above that. And so as we build this turquoise leadership, it's something that I wanted to express with you all because I find it to be incredibly rewarding in my life. When you remove the drama of it and you make it something dreamlike, then the dream becomes a reality. You have your canvas. But if it would have been for me sitting here listening to the drama that was going on in this house and just the whole stressors and stuff like that and money and all that stuff, I wouldn't have realized that my dream is the answer because that's what God wants for me. It doesn't matter what they said. And let me tell you something, as soon as I get a chance, I'm going to be bouncing. I don't, I realize that in my life, I'm a dreamer because that's the energy that God wants on the planet. It doesn't matter if other people understand my heart. I'm the pure heart. And I'm here to do what I can to raise the vibration of the collective, but I can't make people do stuff but I can create beautiful things. I can create the show that I'm trying to get up, whatever it is. This isn't about the show. This is about spirituality. And I can do that in a way that isn't combative. It's not inclusive. It's not like oh, elitist. It's not monopolization of, of faith. It's the truth of creation. It's the architect coming through me. And I realized that it was a test. It was a test on me. If I would be able to see through all of the bullshit and be willing to go for my dreams and figure out any way to reach the right person to share that there's more out there. It doesn't matter in the end what these people were saying or the drama. It doesn't matter about the earthquake that's coming this week and I have to go through that. It doesn't matter because at the end of the day, that dream is what will get me through whatever's to come because that's what God wants for me. And knowing that set me free to fly away. I can go live in a tent if I fucking want to, really. I could work at Dairy Queen <laughs> um, until it's, the dream is ready. But what it took was the taking away of the other voices. They don't know what God has in store for you. Because only you know your destiny. And only destiny will show up when you're ready to receive that. It doesn't matter what the adversity would have been. Like, you know, okay, so i got to go through the earthquake. Okay, so the world's going to fall apart around me. And, I mean, in this love story, at least the benefit would have been that I would have the other person. And that one person is the person that God wants for me. So that person and I would just go off and, I don't know, fucking, what would be a good fantasy ending? Go buy a fucking island somewhere. And, like, you know, as long as there's no volcanoes, because I've already been through that. <laughs> um, but you know what I mean? Like, make that, make your canvas so big and ridiculous that you always are growing and you're always showing and are always proving the impossible possible. I think that's the best message I can leave for you guys on this wonderful Sunday of creation. You guys have a great day. Bye.